for joining our LEAD AP, BD, and C exam prep program. My name is Amanda Hufford, and I will be the moderator and one of your instructors for this program. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you all to the exam prep kickoff meeting. Congratulations on your decision to pursue the LEAD AP credential. On both a national and a global scale, there is a huge need for qualified sustainability and green building professionals. Becoming a LEAD AP will position yourself to meet the market needs and to stay current with the latest green building trends. In order to better assist you as you prepare for the LEAD AP exam, we have prepared this presentation. Also, please use this time to adjust your speaker volume, screen resolution, and settings to better view this presentation. Since this is a recorded session, you have the liberty to play, pause, go back, or skip forward throughout the presentation to the selections you are most interested in. Navigating the presentation isn't hard, and we're sure you'll find it easy and intuitive. Make use of the outlines, thumbnails, and hyperlinks on the slides. Be sure to scroll around the slides and see where a few mouse clicks might take you. About GBRI. GBRI, Green Building Research Institute, is a research institute and education provider located in San Antonio, Texas. We are an independently owned small organization founded with the belief that the best way to encourage responsible development is to provide resources to the builders, designers, and engineers who are crafting our future. Our mission is to promote green building design principles and practices around the globe. We hope to achieve this by making green building resources and education available for everyone, from the first-time builders to the large design firms. At present, we provide sustainability education, lead exam prep, lead CE courses, project experience, and implementation training for lead, AIA, and other building professionals, and students from around the world. We are also excited about our green barcode directory launched earlier this year. In addition, we also provide sustainability and consulting. Some of our notable clients include GSA, U.S. Air Force, and U.S. Army. All of our courses and packages are available online for your convenience and can be accessed 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Let me take this opportunity to thank our team for their hard work and dedication to make this exam prep a reality. You can see all our talented contributors and industry experts who made their valuable input toward the design and implementation of our exam prep program. Here we have listed the objectives for this short presentation. As attendees, you will become familiar with LEAD AP credential, registration and scheduling, understand LEAD exam prep structure, and familiarize with the exam content and concepts. In addition, you will also be introduced to our roadmap to prepare and pass the LEAD AP exam within five to seven weeks based on your schedule. There are two levels of LEAD credentials, the LEAD Green Associate and the LEAD Accredited Professional. You must pass the LEAD Green Associate exam in order to earn the LEAD AP credential. You may take both exams during the same testing period, but be aware that you must still pass the LEAD Green Associate exam in order to pass the LEAD AP. If you pass the LEAD AP exam but fail the LEAD Green Associate, you will not receive the credential. The LEAD AP credential is the Tier 2 or Secondary LEAD credential. It designates an advanced knowledge of a specific LEAD rating system. While the LEAD Green Associate exam requires general knowledge of the prerequisites and credits, the LEAD AP exams require specific knowledge of each prerequisite and a credit in a particular rating system. LEAD Fellows are highly accomplished individuals nominated by their peers for their contributions to advancing the field of green building. LEAD APs who have demonstrated exceptional achievement in key mastery elements related to technical knowledge and skill 
are eligible for the honor. The lead AP candidate is required to choose a specialty, which means that he or she must specialize in a specific rating system. The following are the available specialties and their corresponding rating system. Lead AP B, D, and C, Building Design and Construction. Lead AP I, D, and C, Interior Design and Construction. Lead AP O, M, Existing Buildings, Operations and Maintenance, E, B, and O, M. Lead AP N, D, Neighborhood Development. The requirement to submit proof of LEED project experience at the time of application is no longer required for the LEED V4 LEED AP exam, but for the first time, LEED project experience competency will be assessed within the LEED AP exam. What does that mean? Practitioner experience is critical to the LEED AP design, and as such, Proficiency will be attested objectively within the LEAD AP exam itself. The requirement to submit proof of LEAD project experience at the time of application is no longer required for the LEAD V4 LEAD AP program. However, GBCI strongly urges candidates to gain meaningful project experience prior to taking the test, as it is critical to successful exam performance. Don't worry if you don't have any PE. GBRI's exam prep program is uniquely designed around a live LEAD project where students can learn and apply practical knowledge required to pass the, L, the LEAD AP exam. There is a lot to know for this exam and finding the right information can be confusing. So we at GBRI have outlined a plan for you to successfully take the exam and ways to self-evaluate your progress. The first thing to do is to register for the exam and pay the registration fees. You have up to a year to take the exam from when you first register. You can later request a specific exam date when you feel confident that you are ready. Take your time to study and really learn versus just cramming the information and forgetting it right after the exam. Also, download the candidate handbook and read through all of it. Next, to study, study, study until you know all of the information backwards and forwards. The exam is very thorough, so make sure you know all of the information that is required, how to apply it, and have a solid understanding of green building principles when you've already started the process through this webinar. We suggest going through our study module to make sure you fully understand the information. We have prepared a suggested seven-week roadmap for BD&C exam prep. You may use it or edit it to fit your schedule and needs, as each of us has a different way of studying and memorizing. In order for you to quickly grasp and memorize credits, we have prepared flashcards and memory charts for you. Once you are familiar with the topic, take the section quiz. Finally, take advantage of our simulated mock exams. If you score 80% or higher, you're all set. Otherwise, we suggest watching the modules and reading the guide again. We recommend watching and reading each session at least twice or three times. One month before the exam, make sure your name and your USGBC.org account matches the name on your identification. People have been turned away for even the smallest differences on their identification. For example, putting Mike on your account and then showing up for the exam with identification that states Michael. One week before your exam, confirm that the date, time, and location of your exam are correct. If not, contact Prometric at Prometric.com no less than three full days before the exam. On the day before your exam, relax and get plenty of sleep. Some nutritious brain food is a good idea as well. Stay calm and remember how well you've prepared and you can do it. Registration, Scheduling, and Fees To register for an exam, log in to your credentials account by using your existing USGBC site, user account, or creating a new account if you do not have one. Verify that the name you enter matches the name on the ID you will present at the test center. 
If it does not match, please update your name in your site user account settings. Contact GBCI if you experience issues updating your name. Select the credential exam you wish to apply for and follow the instructions on the screen to complete the application. All candidates must also agree to the disciplinary and exam appeals policy and credentialing maintenance requirements must submit to an application audit and be 18 years of age or older. Exam Scheduling Once you register and pay for your exam, you have one year to schedule your exam session. You may request up to a six-month extension of this one-year period by submitting the circumstances and any supporting documentation to GBCI. Exam fees are non-refundable. After three unsuccessful attempts, you must wait 90 days before submitting a new registration to GBCI. Access exam scheduling through your credentials account. When the exam appointment is scheduled, you will receive a confirmation number on screen from Prometric through an email. Record your confirmation number. You will need this confirmation number to confirm, cancel, or reschedule your appointment through the Prometric website. Once you have scheduled an exam, please print your confirmation notice from Prometric. Keep your confirmation notice from any communications with Prometric about your exam. Exam fees. See the exam page at the USGBC website for pricing. For USGBC members to receive member pricing for your exam, you must have linked your membership status to your USGBC account prior to registration. Now, let's look at exam format, content, and resources. Exam development. All lead exams are developed and regularly updated by a global network of subject matter experts and meet the specifications of a job analysis. This exam ex assesses candidates' abilities at three hierarchical cognitive levels, recall, application, and analysis. Recall items. These items assess a candidate's ability to recall factual material that is presented in a similar context to exam references. Application items. These items provide a candidate with a novel problem or scenario that the candidate can solve using familiar principles or procedures described in the exam references. Analysis items. These items assess a candidate's ability to break the problem down into its components to create a solution. The candidate must not only recognize the different elements of the problem, but must also evaluate the relationship or interactions of these elements. Exam Format The LEAD AP exam is comprised of two parts, the LEAD Green Associate exam and the LEAD AP with Specialty exam. Each part contains a hundred randomly delivered multiple choice questions and each part must be completed in two hours. Total set time for the LEAD AP exam will be four hours and 20 minutes, including a tutorial and short satisfaction survey. Candidates who have already passed the LEAD Green Associate exam can register for the specialty only portion of the exam and do not need to sit through the entire composite exam. Please be aware that the option to take the composite exam is one setting. In one sitting is not available in all languages and at all test centers. If you cannot find the option to register for the combined LEAD AP exam, please register for one of the two core parts separately. Exams have both scored and unscored items. All items are delivered randomly throughout the exam and candidates are not informed of an item's status so candidates should respond to all of the items on the exam. Unscored items are used to gather performance data to inform whether the item should be scored on future exams. The exams are computer-based. Exam questions and answer options are displayed on the screen. The computer records your responses and times to your exam. You are able to change your answers, skip questions, and flag questions for later review. While taking your exam, you may come across test items on which you would like to leave comments. Be sure to add your comments during the exam by clicking the comment button at the bottom of the screen. 
be sure to inform GBCI that you have left comments on your exam. Be prepared to commit 4 hours and 20 minutes to the entire process. Total exam time is broken out as follows. An optional 10-minute tutorial, the 2-hour LEED Green Associate exam, and the 2-hour Building Design and Construction Specialty exam, and an optional 10-minute exit survey. Be aware that if a candidate exits the exam session, the exam cannot be restarted and the exam session and fee are forfeit. In the LEAD V4 test specifications, knowledge domains reflect the rating systems, credit categories, and what one needs to know. These include concepts such as LEAD process, integrative strategies, LEAD credit categories listed on the slide, and project surroundings and public outreach. Listed here are the knowledge domains and the number of questions representing each knowledge domain. The second attribute being tested are task domains. Task domains reflect the task necessary to perform lead safely and effectively. These include concepts such as lead project and team coordination, lead certification process, analysis required for lead credits, and advocacy and education for adoption for lead rating systems. Further, these components are linked together in each test question. For instance, it is not sufficient to know that LEAD Online is, but rather the candidate will need to know how to use LEAD Online. Without ever registering a project or observing someone register a project, the candidate will not know how to answer the LEAD Online questions. Without participating in a share it or meeting, the candidate will not be able to answer questions in the integrative process. By linking tasks and knowledge requirements in multiple choice setting question, Cognitive processes, what you know, as well as skills, what you do, are evaluated. The LEAD V4 exams are built two dimensionally. That is, each time in the exam will have two specific attributes. It will be testing both a knowledge and a task attribute. Now that you are familiar with the knowledge domains and task domains, how should we go about preparing for the exam prep? On the screen, you are looking at the nine knowledge domains you will be tested for on the LEAD AP exam. LEAD processes, materials and resources, energy and atmosphere, and integrative strategies. It may look complicated. Don't worry, our expert instructors at GBRI have made it simple and streamlined by grouping them into four meetings, as you can see now. Each meeting will cover the respective knowledge domains and address the applicable task domains. The resources used by the subject matter experts to write test questions for the LEAD AP with specialty exam include the rating system, certification resources, calculations, forms, guidance documents, and LEAD online registration forms. Now let's look at what to expect at the exam and what happens after. What to expect at the test center. Arrive at the test center at least 30 minutes prior to your scheduled exam appointment. You will be escorted to a workstation by a test center staff. You must remain in your seat during the exam except when authorized to leave by a test center staff. Raise your hand to notify test center staff if you experience problems with your computer, an error message appears on the computer screen, do not clear the message. You need to take a break. Testing time will not be suspended. Or you need the test center staff for any other reason. Identification requirements. Candidates must provide valid, unexpired ID with a signature, a photograph that looks like the candidate, and an expiration date. We have included examples of acceptable IDs on the slide. Exam results. All LEAD professional exams are scored between 125 and 200. A score of 170 or higher is required to pass. 
Your exam score will be displayed on the screen at the end of the exam, and you will receive a printed report of your results from the Test Center staff. For the LEAD AP combined exams, you must earn 170 or higher on both parts within the same application period to earn the credential. Within 72 hours of your appointment, your exam results will be processed, your account will be updated, and if applicable, your badge will be updated in the usgbc.org people directory. Passing the exam. Designing your credential. As soon as you have passed the exam, you can use the title LEAD Accredited Professional or LEAD AP and the logo. Certificates. Once your exam results have been processed, you can request your certificate. Certificates are available in two forms. PDF soft copy, available for download at any time for free, and a hard copy. See website for pricing and ordering information. If your certificate arrives damaged or does not arrive at all, please request a free replacement. Credential Maintenance Program. LEAD Green Associates must complete 15 continuing education hours. Earning the LEAD AP after the LEAD Green Associate. If you are a LEAD Green Associate when you earn the LEAD AP credential, your LEAD Green Associate credential expires and is replaced by the LEAD AP. LEAD APs must complete 30 continuing education hours. As a USGBC education partner, GBRI provides CE hours are well for professionals so you know where to get your CE hours from. Now that you are familiar with the LEAD exam requirements, let's see how GBRI can help you pass the exam. Our exam prep suite consists of everything you need to know to pass the exam. You don't have to purchase anything else to pass the exam. Our suite includes four live online classes or on-demand narrated study modules covering all knowledge domains and task domains. Study guides are notes that complement the online modules, flashcards, memory cards, audio files, and access to more than 400 practice questions representing the knowledge domains and two to three simulated mock exams are also included. So in total, you're looking at 600 to 700 practice questions. Our online modules cover each knowledge domain we looked at earlier. There are a total of eight online modules that cover nine knowledge domains. Each online module comes on demand access to study material 24-7. This study guide is uniquely designed to complement our online modules. It has a copy of the slides you see on the online modules and additional materials such as key terms or glossaries, examples, tips, and last but not least, space to make notes. To make best use of this guide, use it alongside while watching the online modules. We have provided space to take notes and have added additional notes and tips that you might not see on online module slides. Take notes as you make progress. The study guide could also be used with our audio files. Audio files are voice files from our online meetings, so it would make the best sense to listen to them while going through the study guide. Memorization charts are included in the study guide in the credit categories to which they apply. Memory charts include key information you would need to know about a credit, such as reference standards. Reference standards are a third part authoritative documents that help the implementation of various lead credits. Some lead credits have none, some have a couple or more, and some have many. It is important to know the reference standards and what they apply to because it will be on the exam. The memory charts are also available as separate charts so that you can print them and make notes as necessary. At the end of each section in the online module and study guide, there will be a few quiz questions. These are provided as a way to self-evaluate your progress and knowledge of each knowledge domain. Once you are through with a section, we encourage you to complete the section quizzes. 
Review each question and answer even when you have made the correct choice to identify the following. Learn to identify definitive words, must versus should, can, may, etc. Identify the right answers. Identify when the wrong answers are wrong and research what would make them correct answers. If the question said, or this answer would apply to this credit, or this answer choice is not relevant to lead at all. A score of 80% or higher in each category is a good indicator for being well prepared. If your score is below 80%, identify your gaps and revise the online module as applicable before retaking the quiz. Our handy flashcards will help you memorize prerequisites and credits that you must know for the exam. They provide a great learning opportunity and also a way to self-assess if you've mastered the material. We suggest reading through all of them and then go back over each section individually until you feel confident that you know all of the prerequisites and credits. The mock exams are an excellent way to tell if you're ready for the exam. We suggest spending about 80% of your time studying and then 20% on mock exams. Make sure you take notes on what you do not understand so that you can be sure to go over it later. It's important to test yourself in a setting that will be similar to the real exam, so find a quiet place, answer each question to the best of your abilities, take notes on questions you don't feel confident in, and no peeking at the study guide. It's also important to practice in this way so that you won't be as nervous on the real exam. We suggest taking each mock exam until you are confidently scoring between 80 to 90 percent on each one. Throughout the online module and study guide, we have provided various icons that represent credit intent, requirements, and implementation. When you see these icons, please remember that they indicate important information. We have included some icons here for your reference. Here you can see more icons that represent documentation for a credit, a calculator icon for credit calculations, and an icon representing a person to show associated individuals for a lead credit. All these icons will help you memorize the concepts faster. The thumbs icon is used to represent lead credit that offer exemplary performance credit and thumbs down to show that a credit is not eligible for exemplary performance. The global icon denotes credits we, where we talk about credit compliance for international projects or projects outside of the U.S. The icons on this slide are used from USGBC lead program. To stay consistent, we use the same icons. These icons represent each sustainability category, such as an icon for a bus location or transportation, two leaves for sustainable sites, water drop for water efficiency section, a sun icon for energy section, recycling icon for materials, and an open window icon for indoor environment. You can also see different building icons on this slide. Each building represents a particular project type, like retail, hospitality, new construction, schools, etc. All these icons will not only help you navigate between sections, but also memorize the related credits that fall under these categories. In order to better assist you as you prepare for the LEAD AP exam, we've prepared a roadmap. We understand that everyone has their way of studying, and we recommend that way, use that way that works best for you. As you are already aware by now, the LEAD AP exam is a two-part test. You may either take the full four-hour exam at once, which also includes the LEAD GA exam, or you could follow a phase approach where you prepare for the LEAD GA exam prep first, then take the exam, and then proceed to prepare for the LEAD AP with specialty exam. If you are planning to take the two-part test at once, we strongly recommend you become familiar with our LEAD GA exam prep materials before starting LEAD AP exam prep materials. Take the LEAD GA section quizzes to build your sustainability and LEAD basic knowledge. 
If you are a lead GA already, we still recommend, though it is not required, that you watch the lead GA modules to refresh your knowledge. This will give you a strong foundation for lead AP exam prep. Following slides will give you a week-by-week -week overview of our recommended path. Week 0. Read the LEAD AP Candidate Handbook. Make sure you have access to our study guide, exam prep materials, handout materials, and flashcards. Print out flashcards, quick summary charts, and reference standards. Also print out the study guides or notes for each section, though this is optional. Meeting 1 is a collection of two modules that represent LEAD process project surroundings, and integrative strategies. Week 1, before watching Meeting 1. Print study guide for Meeting 1, though optional, to take notes. Get familiar with key terms or glossary terms, and read the lead process and integrative strategies portion. Week 1, after watching Meeting 1. Revise each section of the online module if required and make sure you are thorough with the section. Take practice quiz questions for each section. Analyze right and wrong answers to identify gaps. Revise sections again as required. Take practice quiz questions again if required. Meeting 2 is a collection of two modules that represent location and transportation and sustainable sites. Week 2, before watching Meeting 2 or Module 3 and 4. Print study guide for Meeting 1, though optional, to take notes. Become familiar with key terms or glossary terms from the study guide. Read and locate transportation and sustainability site sections for the study guide. Week 2, after watching Meeting 2 or Module 3 and 4. Revise each section of the online module if required until you are thorough with the section. Take practice quiz questions after each section. Analyze right and wrong answers to identify gaps. Revise sections again as required and take practice quiz questions again if required. Meeting 3 is a collection of two modules that represent water efficiency and energy and atmosphere. Week 3, before watching Meeting 3 or Module 5 and 6. Print study guide for Meeting 1, optional, to take notes. Become familiar with key terms or glossary terms from the study guide. Read the water efficiency and energy atmosphere sections from the study guide. Week 3, after watching Meeting 3 or Module 5 and 6. Revise each section of the online module if required until you are thorough with the section. Take practice quiz questions for each section and analyze right and wrong answers to identify gaps. Revise sections again as required. And take practice quiz questions again if required. Meeting 4 is a collection of two modules that represent materials and resources for MR and Indoor Environmental Quality, or EIQ. Week 4, before watching Meeting 4 or Module 7 and 8. Print study guide for meeting, though optional, to take notes. Become familiar with key terms or glossary terms from the study guide. Read the Materials and Resources, or MR, and Indoor Environmental Quality, or IEQ, sections from the study guide. Week 4, after watching Meeting 4 or Module 7 and 8. Revise each section of the online module if required until you are thorough with the section. Practice quiz questions for each section and analyze right and wrong answers to identify gaps. Revise sections again as required and take practice questions again if required. By week 5, you must be familiar with all knowledge domains, so be sure to revise online modules and take the section quizzes. Score at least 80% for all of the quizzes and use flashcards and memory charts to bridge the knowledge gaps and make additional flashcards where necessary. 
Once you are thorough with the section quizzes, it's time to take the mock exams. These are simulated just like the actual exam. There are 100 questions for each. Take the first mock exam and score at least 80%. Revise again if required and take the second mock exam. For week 7, reread the reference material portions where you scored low or have memory gaps. Use flashcards to retain memory. Revise quiz questions, but don't study too hard into the night before. Relax and then take the lead AP exam. Let's look at some tips for the lead exam. Memorization is key to passing the test, but you don't have to memorize everything. Make sure that you have the key terms memorized to ensure a correct answer to those easy questions that are basically just definitions. For example, you could have a question that states, which of the following is not gray water? As long as you have that identification memorized, that question will be an easy check mark. Since GBRI has been creating exam preparation materials for over four years, we've had many students give us some tips and tricks on passing the exam. We have listed some of them here, and we have listed more tips and techniques in our study guide. Please feel free to go through them. Be sure to take more than one practice exam. Once you consistently make an 80 to 90 percent, you are ready to take your lead AP test. So, what's next? Let's get started.